Good morning, my name is Ralph Friedrichs and welcome to Take Your Life Back. Today we're going to talk about a subject that's really, really important and what it's uh, entitled is Rock Bottom. Yesterday we spoke about how to deal with relapse, how to bounce back from a relapse. Today we're going to hit Rock Bottom, but before we go there, I'm going to read a short, quick bio that I wrote on my, about myself. Uh, that Pam from Time to Heal hopefully will be reading on her show and I'm going to read it to you so here it is in 2011 at the age of 49 I started feeling much more mature I started thinking differently getting rid of old habits and wanting to make positive changes however the positive changes could not happen until the gates of demons were closed I call that my rock bottom in 2013 those gates were closed from any alcohol. Not only closed, but I padlocked it. I realized I was a functioning alcoholic. For the most part, I isolated myself from others and now want to be a person that I never let myself be. I had to face sobriety, life without alcohol, use and the lifestyle I created around it. So now that I see things clearly, drinking is not even a choice in my life. It would be too painful to start again. I now have learned from the past, left it behind, and intentionally created a positive future. Part of that future is educating myself continuously about my disease, how to live with it, and how to help others. I want to help others see, feel, experience sobriety, life without alcohol and or drugs. As I approach different addiction educational methods, videos be became a passion for me. Videos give all of you a face, a voice, and my story. My story will continue through the camera into your living room, kitchen, and anywhere else you might be viewing this. Join me in the fight of the lifetime. Together we will all stand tall and sober. Thank you, and please go to www.clearviews.info. That's C-L-E-A-R-V-I-E-W-S dot I-N-F-O. That was a short bio. Uh, I had to make it for less than about 72 seconds. I believe that is exactly 72 seconds. So it kind of recaps of where I was, what my thinking started in 2011, and how I relapsed in 2011. And that's what we spoke about yesterday. So I didn't hit rock bottom until 2013. And 2013 is where my life changed. So are uh, you getting close to hitting rock bottom? Let's address the issue of rock bottom. And here it is readiness to change when you hit rock bottom i think you finally realize it is time for change we need to let go of all the demons that we possess we need to let go of all the negativity around us but we need to let go of the most important thing and that's your alcohol and drug addiction or use because your addiction will always be there but we need to let go and finally say i have a problem the longer the people remain addicted the more harm will be done in their life. This is coming directly against from the Mayo Clinic about hitting rock bottom. Substance abuse not only damages their physical and mental health, but it also robs them of their possessions. You could possibly lose your house, your car, your wife. Not that she's a possession, but you know what I'm saying. You could lose everything around you. Relationships, self-respect. You lose that and everything is gone. As soon as an individual has reached a point that they are ready to change, then this will be your rock bottom. When you're standing on the platform of rock bottom, there is no basement, there is no way down, and you're looking straight up, you see the sunshine. There is light at the end of that tunnel, meaning up to get from where you are. Rock bottom defined. Here is the definition. Rock bottom refers to a very lowest level the word is often used to describe the point in life of an addict when they are finally willing to accept and seek and admit that they have a problem and seek the help that they desperately need. Things are now so bad for them that it is impossible to deny their problems anymore. Hitting rock bottom may result due to a particular event or it can be a slow decline over time, which it was for me. Here are signs due to addiction and when you're ready to hit rock bottom. Let's start with these signs. The loss of a job. Was it due to because of your addiction? 
and now you're finally saying I can't do this I've hit rock bottom I cannot do this anymore a relationship breakup could cause you to continuously live in your addiction and finally when your wife left you your husband left you is that your rock bottom remorse over particular bad behavior while intoxicated you might have done something that was terrible was it driving drunk was it taking your partner against their will was it anything that caused this that made you go rock bottom legal problems if you did drive drunk drunk did you get caught did you spend a night in jail and now it might cost you five six thousand dollars besides the fact that you might lose your license has that caused rock bottom losses of a friendship did you lose a friend over this did you say or do something that irresponsible and unacceptable that you lost this fr a friend and you finally say I do have a problem I cannot afford to lose my friends anymore and folks if that is the cause you can bounce back yesterday's video and a relapse when you hit rock bottom a relapse is a relapse but a setback is a setback deterioration health warnings from a doctor he's telling you your liver is shot you if you keep drinking you're going to die you hit rock bottom because you said I had enough loss of accommodation can you imagine that mental breakdown that alcohol those drugs are eating all your brain cells and the more you do it the less brain functions you're gonna have has that caused your rock bottom financial problems it's funny, I was just talking about this to my father this morning. What I choose to call a sober wallet is the fact that I can continuously do my videos, support my website, all at no cost for one reason only. The reason is because I want to help you. But what gives me the drive other than my passion for you, helping you is the fact that all the money that I have saved from not drinking, $20, $30 a day, which I choose to call a sober wallet can go into there to support my passion which is to help other people to support my websites and my videotapes social embarrassment did you go to a bar did you possibly write something on Facebook or on Twitter that embarrassed you to the point where one of the other ones applied now that is rock bottom many addicts describe hitting rock bottom as finally Becoming sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. I am just so tired of feeling sick and tired, they say. That's your rock bottom. But all these things are signs of hitting rock bottom. But I will tell you, folks, you'll know when you hit rock bottom because the first sign is, is to you finally admit you have a problem. And as long as you won't admit that you have a problem, you have not hit rock bottom. What you have is a temporary band aid on a situation that will temporarily be there. You'll stop drinking possibly for a week or two, and then you will have a relapse, which I call a setback, because a relapse sounds permanent. A setback will set you back, but you can start all over again, but don't go back into the old abuse. Here's a rock bottom myth. A common idea is that the addicts need to lose everything before they can be willing to get help. This myth about rock bottom is not only wrong, but it can also be unhelpful way of looking at things. There is no need for people to lose everything it will always be up to them to decide when they have had enough folks I didn't lose everything but it could have very easily happened to me in my life don't let it get to that point if you have some of those signs that we just spoke about some of those incidents even one of them but if you have more than one you definitely need to take a self inventory are you ready for rock bottom have you had enough rock bottom and denial those who are addicted to alcohols and dr alcohol and drugs are prevented from hit rock bottom because of denial. I don't have a problem. Honey, it's only a couple beers a day. I only had a couple of shots. What do you mean I'm drunk? No. It's lack of sleep. It's the medication I'm on. Those are signs of denial. I've been there. I've done it. So please forget the denial. This is a defense mechanism that people use when they when there is something that they do not want to face I don't want to face that I'm an alcoholic but people around you are no noticing the excessive amount of alcohol you're drinking noticing the white stuff by your nose noticing you smoking marijuana 
all humans will have used denial to some degree or another but in addicts it could be particularly strong because you know what when you catch a child stealing they will deny it and deny it forever well when people see you drinking and people see you just smoking weed or doing crack and they bring it up to your attention it's an embarrassment situation for you and you will deny it that is denial even though their life is falling apart because of their addiction they will be able to blame this on everyone else it's not my problem it's the sleep it's the medication it's my job it's you honey it's the children it's not me I'm just perfect that's why I'm feeding myself with alcohol and drugs because I don't need it it's you folks doing what you do it's my job my medication it's whatever it's not me they may even feel that the substance abuse is only thing in their life that is dependable that's why I ran to my vodka because it took me away from reality folks it intoxicated me because then you think it's so dependable in your life because you are dependent on it it's not making you feel dependable because you depend on it whether it's your alcohol your drugs you depend on it it doesn't need you as much as you need it feeling comfortable in addiction this is when you're in addiction comfortable how do you feel comfortable the life of an addict involves a lot of suffering but it also predictable and known suffering the idea of leaving the comfort of their addiction can be unattractive proposition because it involves taking a step into the unknown folks june 22nd 2013 i didn't know what june 23rd is going to bring at 24th but i did live with the concept of 24 hours a day and folks i'm telling you you need to do that and if 24 hours a day is still too much as we're bouncing back to my uh, from relapse video yesterday, I, I even said break it down into hours, break it down into minutes. Seconds is kind of ridiculous, but do it that way. If 24 hours is too much of a goal to shoot for, break it down. Let's get back. Denial can help the addict hide from such suffering caused by addiction. And they will likely view recovery as just depriving themselves of one thing in life, and that provides them with comfort. You know, folks, when, when I speak about me and I speak about my methods of recovery and my uh, seeking out to help folks like you if, if that's what you're looking for people look at me and, and they have question marks probably I did they, they don't say it to my face but I could see it behind their face what they're thinking and that's okay because people accountability of your past will stick in people's mind until you prove them different show them and we're going to discuss later on on 10 ways to find happiness when you hit rock bottom. Show them with those 20 ways how you can eliminate that. That's what you need to show them. Now, raising rock bottom. Hold on one second. Raising rock bottom. I have to read on top now, so bear with me. The less that an individual needs to lose before escaping addiction, addiction is better it will turn out for them. Raising rock bottom is all about bringing this point of change to them now. There is likely to already be enough evidence of need for the individual to quit their self-destruction behavior. They just need to be made more aware. Folks, if you have loved ones, if you have people in your life, you need to make them aware of what is going on. Help them in any which way you can. One reason why an addict will be able to hide behind denial is that they can be protected from a lot of consequences of their addiction. I did that because I drank. Sorry, won't happen again. I did this because I did drugs. Sorry, won't happen again. That is not only denial, but they're hiding behind, they're hiding behind their consequences due to the addiction. The addict can raise their own rock bottom by considering all things in their life that, that they are missing out on. It can also help to find out more about where their addiction is going to take them. The fear of losing everything may be enough to prevent them from losing everything. So the thought of everything being lost might give you a reason to prevent it from happening in the first place, folks. Getting up after hitting rock bottom. How do you lift yourself up from... You've now hit rock bottom. You and I are sitting here. We're both in this, this tunnel or this cave. No basement below us. It's a hard gravel surface and that's rock bottom but we look up 
And what do we see? We see sunshine. So how do we get up after hitting rock bottom? The ups and downs of life are what make it so valuable. We hit the lows before we hit the highs. And isn't that true in life? You always hit the lows first. And the cycle repeats itself over and over and over again. And most often, it's worth and repeating itself without warning. Just when you have 20 bucks in your pocket and you think you finally have a couple bucks for your for your next couple days, a bill shows up, a circumstance, a car repair. Uh, let's see. Fear not, friends. Even if you feel that you've hit rock bottom, it is not the end. That's right. Life does go on. Don't pity yourself. Don't. The pity party is over. Remember, everything happens for a reason. We were just talking about this morning. Everything happens for a reason. And folks, I believe in karma. What you give, you get. So if you give disrespect to people, you'll get disrespect. If you give presents and money, that's what you'll get in return from people. If you give a compliment, you'll get one. It's that easy, karma. We are meant to suffer through misfortune before we can reach the high points in life. You need to be broken down. That's what rock bottom is. You're broken down to nothing. It's only one way, and that's up now. Battling through the tough times makes you a stronger person, challenging you to rise to the occasion and conquer the stuff that gets in your way. If you're feeling like you're finally hitting rock bottom, don't pity yourself. Hitting rock bottom should be a celebration. Pity yourself if you're not admitting that you have a problem. Pity yourself for that. Make an everyday to-do list. I do this. When I do these shows, I have a to-do list. When I have things to do with my job, I have to pre-plan an action plan. We always talk about action plans. Those are to-do lists. Do one. Sometimes recovering from whatever it is that you down, you down is really hard to do. Just jot it down. If you're feeling so down that it's hard to get out of bed and get started with your everyday and every morning, make an everyday to-do list. Do it step by step. Getting yourself motivated to do anything when your mind is totally consumed with overwhelming negative thoughts can become a challenge to conquer everyday single day operations or activities. Instead of focusing on the bad, an everyday to-do an everyday to-do list gives you a handful of things to focus on day out, day in, day out. Mind looks a little bit like this and I wrote down a couple of things that I like to do and these are five things that came to my mind at three o'clock this morning maintain a positive mind folks I'm gonna address this and I'm gonna say to you folks again positive is sunshine negative is darkness you need to be positive no matter what you face in life no matter how bad things are turn the negative into a positive you got a bill you can't afford it now turn it around can we cut down on another item to afford this bill? Do we need to get a part-time job? Whatever the negativity is, turn it around with positivity. Look on the bright side of negative situations. That's what you need to do. I do this daily, folks. I used to be very argumentative with people. Now, I listen. If I don't agree with something, unless it's really important, I don't disagree with the person. I just let it go. That is thinking positive. When I uh, can't figure out how to use the camera for this video, I don't curse. I don't slam things down. I think about it with a clear mind because I've been sober and I, I do have an addiction, but I'm fighting it. That is positive. Number two, remove the word hate from your vocabulary. I hate to have to do these videos. Absolutely not. I love to do this. This is my passion. I love sobriety. Folks, there's a website. It's called lovesober.com or lovesober.org. It's one of those two. But the name itself is so interesting. Because when you are sober and you're fighting it daily and you have passions to help other people, you will love to be sober. The only time I'm going to use the hate word is if I have to say I hate drinking, I hate doing drugs, and I hate any situation that would cause me to even think about losing my sobriety. Those are the terms that I would use my hate for. So do you understand? 
lose the word hate. Let's go to number... Uh, oh, we're still on number two. Is there anything worth so much negative emotion anyway? Is there anything in life that's worth... Sure, there are circumstances where a doctor might tell you you have a terminal Ill illness. Your husband did leave you. Your wife left you. But you need to be positive. And I know it's hard to say to be positive during situations. But no matter what, try to turn it around. And you remember we spoke about this yesterday, about you need to also let yourself cry. It takes all your emotions and brings them out. Allow yourself. I recommend in the morning, not at night. Because when you cry at night, you go to bed with some sad thoughts. But in the morning, whatever you do to get ready, make part of your routine to let emotions out. And then move forward with a positive day. Number three, forget revenge. Forget it. No matter who hurt you, or who hurts you on a daily basis? Don't come up with this conspiracy to ruin their life. Move on. Feel bad for those who bring you down. Folks, when people look at me like I'm crazy because I do these videos and I want to educate you to, to live a happy, sober life, I don't let it bring me down. Or if somebody has something to criticize me from the past, I don't bring it down. I don't let, bring, I don't let it bring me down, I should say. I move forward. The old Ralph would have counteracted that with something. I don't. Because anything you say is not going to change the negative thoughts that they, or the negative things they said, or ne negative things that they did to you. It won't change it. Rebound with a positive action plan. Karma comes back around. We just talked about that. Uh, I was talking to my wife. Karma is so important in my life. What I put into, I get out of. What I give, I get in return. What I say bad, comes back bad. What I say good, comes back good. Number four, make someone smile. Let me make you smile. You have something to smile for. Because even if the weather is so bad outside, let the sunshine in your heart and in your home. Doesn't matter how bad the weather is. You deserve to smile because when you look in the mirror you are special you are someone that God created and if you're addicted and you're still fighting and and you're having bad days because of your addiction and you're not even sober yet God will take your well-being right now the way you are no matter how bad you might be ask him for guidance and direction he will turn you around but you need to reach out to your higher power I say that in every single video Make someone smile, and that's exactly what it is. It's uplifting to know that you made someone's day just a little bit better, even if a hello or giving somebody at outside of 7-Eleven who looks down and needs a cup of coffee, give them a buck or two. The little bit that you do to help will come back so powerful, you'll be amazed. Look for the good in people. Don't look for the worst things in people. That is the biggest problem we're facing in life. Everybody has something to say about the next person. And if you do have to look for the negativity, look at their addiction possibly. Help them with it. What you put into your addiction, you get out of it. What you put into your relationship, you get out of it. What you put into your husband or your wife, as far as your relationship with them, you get out of it. So if you don't pay attention to your husband and wife, that's exactly what you're going to get, is lack of attention from them. If you're abusive, shame on you. Hopefully you don't get that back. But I hope they call the domestic hotline. But folks, what you put in, you get back. Look for the good in people. Everybody, every human person, every human being has good in their person. It might only be a very small amount of good, no matter how bad it can there has to be good, I promise you. Use their likenesses as motivation to better yourself. So if you do run into a person that's so negative and so nasty to you possibly, use their mirror image and work on that so you don't look like that. In the beginning of this program, you saw a sh short clip of 20 seconds and it was a man standing in front of a painting and painting an image of me and I say to you how do you look after you hit rock bottom how will your image your picture look 
How will it look? Out with the bad, in with the good, people. Make changes, change routines, friends, relationships that will keep you down. If you have friends that will keep you down because they're partying all the time, drinking all the time, criticizing you for trying to better yourself, eliminate them. If you have a relationship, a husband and wife that is abusive, that that's addicted to marijuana, cocaine, crack, alcohol, verbally abusive, mentally abusive, physically abusive, change. Change your routine. Do that. There's nothing wrong with changing routines. But out with the bad, in with the good. Focus on, focus on yourself. Rather than focusing your attention on the negative stuff keeping you in the bottom, focus on bettering yourself. There's always a way to move up when you're rock bottom. Remember, you're on that gravel pit bottom. There's no basement. There are no steps. Look up. And what do you see? That sunshine. Reach up for that sunshine. Work on becoming a better person. If you're going to have a negative life, you're going to have negative results, folks. Working out not only improves your body and health, but energizes your mind. So if you are feeling a lot of negativity, start working out a little bit. It lets the emotions, just like the crying, it lets your emotions out. You might not look like Arnold Schwarzenegger at the end of the day, but you'll feel better. It's, it's what I like to call anger love, like there's tough love and anger love. Let your anger out on the track. Go run or the weights. Let it all out. You need to release your emotions, whether it's through crying, through working out. You need to release them daily. Because when you bottle up emotions, you have signs of uh, stresses that we talk about. And what stresses are, are situations that will give you a reason to relapse what I call setback and you don't want that so avoid them let go it's always the darkest before dawn so let go I live by the proverb and it's a constant reminder that no matter what situation is at hand there's always brightness ahead no matter what there's always a better tomorrow no matter how dark it is today no matter what the situation is no matter where you are right now there is better things to come because you hit rock bottom you might not see them right away but they will come no matter what you're going through let the positive positivity enter your life let the negative go out the back door it's not going to last forever the negativity if you let the positive uh, situations come into your life and it's not going to define who you are the negativity because if you think positive positive results will come from it Overcome hardships. It's just part of life. You will have financial stress. You will have relationship problems. You will have job issues. Everybody does. But drinking or doing drugs is not the answer. So if you've hit rock bottom, now it's time to move up. And I'm going to go over with you after this last item on my list of 10 ways to find happiness when you hit rock bottom. Stop waiting and start, start doing. Stop waiting for the next big, big thing to happen. Don't wait for it to happen. Make it happen. If you're living in the past or looking forward to the future, you're not living right. Live for today, 24 hours at a time. If that's too long, break it down. Live in the present and embrace all that you have to be grateful for. What do you have to be grateful for? Do you have a roof over your head? Do you have food? Do you have a loving wife, husband, mother, father, children? Those are things to be grateful for. If nothing else, you're alive. If you don't have anything, you're alive. You are watching this video. And I appreciate that you're watching this video. And I am so glad that you're alive. And it is something to be thankful for. Because it beats the alternative. And that's something to be thankful for. Stop looking back. Start, uh, stop looking forward. And start working on the present. Work for today. Don't worry about tomorrow. Today is what counts. As promised, 10 ways to find happiness when you hit rock bottom. These are short ones. These are the 10 that I put down. Be nice to people. Is that so hard to do? If you are that negative about yourself, don't take it out on people around you. Because when you're nice to people, that will rub, up, uh, rub against you and you will become nice. 
If you can, be kind through your dark times and not bite the unsuspecting heads off of innocent bystanders, you'll find your personal happiness uplifted. You see what I just said? When you're nice to other people, eventually it will come to be that you'll be nice. So don't, don't get moody around people. Don't get nasty. Don't jump down their throats when they talk to you. Be nice. Extend an arm. Reach out. Talk in a calm matter, matter of voice and just reach out to them. Accomplish something. Number two, during low, low points or at least mine, I felt a total failure. My lowest point was always a failure. I felt like I was not worth anything. I didn't even need people to bring that out to me because I knew damn well what I was doing. I hate to use that word, but I knew I was drinking. Do you think I need my wife to tell me? She just added to the fuel to the fire by, uh, you know, making me feel even worse by telling me. But it's so true, folks. You need to accomplish something. One of your accomplishes today, if you're rock bottom, is to move up to say, I have a problem. Let me get back to this. I felt like I was a total failure, like I just said. Clean your house, go for a run, finish a book, finish a story, write a book, volunteer. Just do something and feel good about it. These videos, my educating not only myself daily, but giving you education, they make me feel good. This is my method of fighting my addiction, and I'm allowing you to enter my life. Because hopefully you want to utilize my method. Whether you utilize it or not, you could utilize any other method. But at the end of the day, folks, I promise you we should shoot for one thing, and that is 100% total sobriety. Because a sober today, I guarantee you will make a better tomorrow. That I guarantee you. Number three, treat yourself even if you can't afford it. And I'm not saying anything, but just a little bit of something. It could be going to a movie, not expensive. It could be just going to Chinese buffet, not expensive, but treat yourself to something because you are somebody. You're God's creation that maybe has some faults, but if you reach out to God, he will guide, direct you, and with the grace of God, you will become exactly what God created you to be when you were born. It's never too late to turn around. It's not a relapse. It's a setback. Life errors are setbacks. They're not permanent failures as long as you recognize what you have and you are now at rock bottom and saying, I need help and I want help and I'm ready to do it. And Ralph, let's go. Number four, go for a walk. Folks, walking is so great. This morning I was sitting at the kitchen table with my father and I uh, turned on my video uh, on Facebook, a video, which was uh, a scene of just the ocean. And for 30 seconds, what the caption said is, listen to the ocean how it relaxes your mind. Folks, it works. It really works. So go for a walk, go to the ocean, do whatever you want to do when it comes to that. I promise if you just go outside, take a long walk and breathe, you'll feel better, clear, and more like a person. You'll feel better. Look at that ocean. Never ending water. Listen to the sound of the waves. Go outside, listen to the birds. That's all God's creation. As much as those birds are happy and as much as that ocean is flown, that's all God's creation, and so are you. It is up to you to ask God for direction and guidance, and he will fix whatever is broken. I promise you. Number five, control. Folks, I've always been a control freak. Went into the Marine Corps, paint, but became a bigger con control freak. But folks, you need to let the controlling go. Now, of course, I'm not 100% at that point, but I get better and better as my fight in addiction and recovery continues. I don't try to control every little item in life. I'm not to say, it's not to say that I'm 100% not a control freak, but I'm saying I'm at least 50%. And that 50% is due to my thinking clear and the clarity around me that allows me to now say maybe I don't need to control everything in my life. If something's out of place, I don't need to push it back into place right now, right here. Do you understand what I'm saying, folks? Let it go. None of us really have it anyway. 
We can plan for everything, save all our money, and still not be prepared for what life throws at us. So don't try to control every minute of the day. What you need to control, if anything, is your addiction. Cry it out. We just spoke about that. It doesn't fix any everything. Sometimes it doesn't fix anything. But of course, tears really rarely do. It is the emotion behind those tears that are within you that you're letting out when you're crying. And you could do that in the morning, like I recommend. Let all emotions out daily. Don't let them bottle up inside you. We don't want any bottles in your life at all if you're an alcoholic. Whether it's emotions bottled or it's beer bottled or alcohol bottled, release all bottled items, including your emotions. Reach out to people. Folks, that's a good one. It's an important one. As a recovering alcoholic, I reach out to fellow recovery. Is that a word? Recoveries. Fellow people that are recovering from addiction. I reach out to them because they understand what I'm going through. But I also reach out to people I love because they also understand. And why do they understand, even though they're not uh, addictive? It's because they saw the Ralph before, and they see the Ralph today, and they're seeing progress, and they are not forced to understand. I'm not saying that, but they are accepting what they're seeing, and they're realizing that no matter what I'm doing right now, it's working for their benefit by seeing a better Ralph. That's all. Let me read what they said. And or what I said and I don't mean reach out to them and unload of all your misery on them everyone has their issues and I'm, yeah exactly what I'm what I wrote there is don't call them and tell them how your cable bills behind three months and all that no reach out to them for advice for understanding for anything like that but don't share your misery with them because they do have their own misery let's get back to this they don't need your misery. That's really what it comes down to. What they need is your friendship, your support. I mean, reach out to someone in friendship. Rekindle a relationship with someone that might have gone stagnant. Force yourself to be around other people and uh, find happiness within that force in yourself. You need to just go and start fresh, people. If, if the people around you have brought you to the point... Uh, where uh, you just feel that it's not a good idea to be around them if, as long as you're fighting addiction, which will be permanently. That I promise you, folks. That's a disease that never go away. So you will always fight with education, with methods. Change people in your life. Do something new. Maybe you always wanted to, I don't know, take kickboxing. Maybe you want to play soccer, ice hockey. Ride a horse. Maybe try some sculpturing of clay. Painting. Like in the beginning of this video, the person was painting my image today. If I would attend the same picture, June 21st of 2013, that image would have been a blurry image of a total, like I choose to call a train wreck, because that's what my life was. Look at the picture he's painting today. Look at the beginning of this video again and look at me on that painting. Do something for someone else. You see an old lady, your neighbor next door, she needs help taking groceries out from the car. Help her. Help her with her, uh, with her grass. Ask a family member if they need help painting a room or whatever. Whatever the need might be, go to your church and see how you can help there. Let me read. Similar to number one, because number one was be nice to people, so it is very similar, but more involved. Go out of your way to do good for others. Realize that you are not the only person on the planet who is struggling, that there are tons of people who in your town and city who are having a tougher time than you. There's always somebody who's going to have it worse than you, like there are people that have it better than you. They also have their struggles. Do something good. Remember, karma goes around, comes around. Number 10, read. Reading also allows you to step outside of your own head, life for a while. Pushing aside your worries and sadness long enough for you to recuperate some of your motivation and self-awareness. So reading is really good. Read a trashy novel. Who cares? But just read, and it's good for you. Read the Bible. There are men, women that read the Bible over and over and over and over again and still need to go back to understand it because there is so much in the Bible. The wisdom in the Bible, the words, the encouragement, Folks, just do some reading. 
I'm going to recap this real quick and then we're going to jump into a couple methods and let's go right back. What is rock bottom? Folks, rock bottom is when you finally hit the rock bottom, you're standing on the pitless gravel bottom with no basement and you're looking up and there's sunshine. That's rock bottom. In order to claim the title of hitting rock bottom is you have to admit you have a problem and you have to realize that without certain methods of fighting addiction and, and reaching out to your higher power, there is no way of climbing out of the rock bottom. And there are different ways of doing it. I'm not going to read everything that we did, but we're going to go right to feeling comfortable with addiction. You need to feel that your addiction is nothing but worries for you, that it's a problem for you. So the only way to feel comfortable with your addiction is to learn how to fight it and how to live with it. That will make you feel comfortable. Because you should not feel comfortable with your addiction and seeking sobriety. If you're comfortable with your addiction and, and it doesn't bother you that you're addicted to drugs and or alcohol, then you haven't hit rock bottom. Then you're just in denial. Raising a rock bottom. The less that an individual needs to lose before escaping addiction, the better it will be for them. Raising rock bottom is all about bringing this point to change to them now. So raise that rock bottom. Getting up after hitting rock bottom. Once you hit rock bottom, you'll know it. Here's how to get up from it. Don't pity yourself. Be happy. Congratulate yourself that you have taken the step of saying, I have a problem and I'm moving forward. Be happy about it. Make an everyday to-do list. I do that daily. I'm looking at three little signs right here around my, my laptop that I literally tape to read. And that was at 2 o'clock or 2.30 this morning, I did my to-do list. And this was part of my to-do list for today's 24 hours of my sobriety. This is not for tomorrow, and I don't worry about yesterday. This is today's to-do list. Part of this to list, besides this, are things like to clean. It could be to go out later on to the store. But if you have a list, you have an action plan. We speak about action plans. That is your plan. You can check off when you're done. And then tonight, go to bed with a clear mind. And the next 24 hours start. And then tomorrow morning, you wake up, let your emotions out. Even if it takes crying a little bit, go outside, listen to the birds. Inhale the fresh air. Listen to the ocean. Make an everyday to-do list is very important. Here are five things that I came up with. Ma maintain a positive mind. Look on the bright side of all negative things. Every negative has a positive. I don't care how bad the negative is. It has a positive. Remove the word hate from your vocabulary. I love to clean. I love to fight my addiction. I want to fight my addiction. Use words like that and get rid of hate. Hate shouldn't even be part of your vocabulary. Hate itself is such a negative word. Forget revenge. People have hurt you. Forget it. Don't come up with a conspiracy how to get them back. Let it go. Because when you let go, it will make you feel better in, inside and it will give you a much better chance of fighting your addiction quicker and you won't have those stressors you won't have the, the relapse which I call setback make, make someone smile I'm gonna make you smile right now with this looking at me you know my wife always says oh wow that looks like a fake smile but folks I can make you smile as much as you can make me smile yes yeah, sometimes I do smile uh, on camera that might not be a real smile but my wife she can tell when they're real smiles and this is a real smile Look for the good in people. No matter who you are, you have good. So no matter who you look at, they have good. God created us to be good. If we took that and went the wrong path in life, we can turn around. It's a setback. Turn around, ask for guidance and direction, and you'll get back to where you were. Focus on yourself. Don't worry about what the neighbors are doing or what your family is doing. Focus on yourself. What is Ralph doing? How can I become better? How can I get rid of the hate that I have for people? How can I look for good in people? How can I maintain a positive attitude? How can I do my to-do list? That's what you're doing. You're focusing on yourself. Because if you can't be happy and if you can't show, show love, you're not going to get either one of those. You need to love yourself to love others. I promise you that. 
Stop waiting. Start doing. Stop waiting for things to happen for you. Make them happen. You cannot sit back and wait for anything in your life to happen. Things don't come to you. You need to go and be aggressive and get. It's like fighting the addiction. The addiction is not going to, on a silver platter, bring you information. You need to educate yourself. And we're going to discuss methods in a minute. Let go of the past. Just let it go. The darkest is before the dawn. So that's where the revenge comes in. Ten ways to find happiness when you hit rock bottom. Number one, be nice to people. We've discussed that. Number two, accomplish something. Do something. I accomplished this video at the end of this. Treat yourself even if you can't afford it. If you can't afford it, treat yourself to a movie, a dinner, or whatever. Treat yourself to something. Because positive reinforcement is, uh, is very important. And the reward system work on children, on uh, dogs, and it can work on an addiction. Go for a walk. Go to the beach. Listen to the ocean. Go outside. Walk. Listen to the birds singing. It's all God's creation. Listen to the music in the background here. That's making me relax and giving you an opportunity to relax. Stop controlling everything. That includes you, Ralph. Stop controlling it. But I've gotten better. I'm not perfect at it yet, but each and every day, things do become better. And hopefully, down the road, I'll be 100% not controlling. In the meantime, I'll settle for 50%. Reach out to people. But reach at them in a positive sense. Don't bring up your dirty laundry to everybody. They have their own laundry hanging. So reach out for the positive reasons. Do something new. Maybe you've always wanted to go kickboxing, painting, fishing, bike riding, marathon running, skydiving, whatever your case might be. Do something different. Do something for someone else. Folks, calmer. Help that old lady next door. You're shopping at uh, Shop and Stop and you see somebody having a problem pushing the cart. Help that person. Load the conveyor belt for that person on the shopping line. Just do something for someone else. And last but not least, read. Read a novel. Read a newspaper. Reading is so good. So, folks, this was a discussion on rock bottom. Yesterday it was on bouncing back from a relapse. So you see the connection. Because even though you hit rock bottom, you still have to be careful with stressors. And if you just hit rock bottom, I guarantee you you've bounced back from a relapse one time or another or a setback so thank you you have now hit rock bottom welcome to rock bottom and from here listen or whatever I just said listen to some of it and and work from here now you hit rock bottom now you're looking for methods you have my method which which are videotapes and my website www.clearviews.info that's c-l-e-a-r v-i-e w-s dot i-n-f-o you also have a-a they have 12 steps been around since 1936. It uh, has helped millions of people. I did go there for a little bit, but then I needed something more active and I created my own methods. I have 16 alternative steps to the 12 steps. They both do about the same thing. Mine are just put in words that are easier to understand, but at the end of the day, all both of them hopefully will give you 100% sobriety. And then if you're really bad off and uh, you don't trust yourself uh, being alone at home or walking down the street without consuming either drugs and or alcohol, you might want to uh, set to a treatment center. Uh, they have the 30, 60, 90 day programs. If you go to my website, www.clearviews.info, you can go right to page 7, click on that, go to your state, click on that, and you might find a location near you. And if you don't see a location near you, just go Google your uh, area with treatment centers and you'll find some right there. Just a quick shout out. I just want to shout out to uh, uh, Pam Hemphill from Time to Heal. She's on Facebook and she has a TV talk show, uh, Facebook and YouTube. Uh, she's usually on on Thursdays. I do have approximately seven videos uploaded onto my website of hers. If you go to www.clearviews.info, you just go on the top uh, bar, you'll see page one, two, and three, and then it says Time to Heal. Click on Time to Heal and you'll go right to her videos uh, she is a uh, a soldier in the fight on addiction as much as I am if not more she's 36 years sober congratulations 
Um, go see her videos. They're excellent videos. And Pam, thank you very much for playing my commercials. Now, we also have Dr. Lou Gonzalez. He is from Starting Point, and his website is www.startingpointmn.com. That's S-T-A-R-T-I-N-G-P-O-I-N-T-M-N.com. com. That's startingpointmn.com. And Dr. Lou Gonzalez uh, has a... Uh, uh, a position or, or he has a, a, a business that does uh, two things you can either do both or you can do one of the two the first thing is is that they offer uh, if you're in recovery coaching for recovery so they can actually uh, you can hire or uh, uh, retain their services and they will uh, guide you through your recovery and the second thing that he also has is how to become a addiction recovery coach which is what I am presently doing and uh, you can do both because I probably would almost guess that the best addiction recovery coach is somebody in sobriety uh, that knows uh, what it's like. Uh, but um, if you are in recovery and you want to uh, do something different, uh, you can also utilize that. And I believe the program is um, $825. And if you go on to his website at www.starting pointmn.com you'll be able to locate uh, exactly what he does but you can also find him on www.clearviews.info which is my website I have his ad in the center of my website and also on the left panel you'll see a picture of how handsome Dr. Lou Gonzalez is now let's get into um, we spoke about the methods which is mind a, re a treatment center and AA we spoke about rock bottom and uh, we need to also just remind ourselves constantly that uh, higher power has to be included in whatever we do. It really does have to be included. So reach out to your God and ask for guidance and direction, and he will help you. That I can guarantee you. And I tell you this, folks, all the time that uh, we, we all have a fork in the road, and if you've taken the wrong path, which I choose to call path of destruction and you're at the point now that you need to turn around which is the setback is walk back until you reach that fork again and go take the other road and ask God for uh, guidance and direction and keep looking at my videos and go to AA and go to the rehab centers folks we talked about the rehab centers I just want to bring this up real quick again uh, rehab centers they do take Medicaid they do take most insurances but folks I have learned that there are programs in most states that if you don't have insurance and you don't have Medicaid that um, you can qualify for a uh, commitment uh, to a rehab center some are 10 days uh, some might be 30 60 or 90 but you can get in on uh, being committed but you need to make the phone calls if you don't have access to uh, finding out where you can make the phone calls uh, get in touch with me you can get in touch with my website uh, www.clearviews.info you can email me which is ralph.friedrichs at yahoo.com that's r-a-l-f dot f-r-i-e-d-r-i-c-h-s at yahoo.com you can also call me at 631-599-0218 and you can also call my business number and I'm the only person that listens to the messages and that would be 844-393-9355 uh, folks you can when you communicate with me it doesn't have to be in a voice sense if you don't want to if you feel more comfortable with a text use my phone number 631-599-0218 you can text me email me I will give you whatever information I possibly can to help you work and live with your addiction whatever I can to help shout out goes to my friend up north today is Saturday it is uh, a month and a week for you congratulations keep up the good work flashing yellow light proceed with caution cautions are stressors you need to watch out for overworking yourself you need to watch out when you go out with friends and if they're going to drink you need to sit back order a mocktail not a cocktail order that coke without the rum order the uh, sprite without the vodka or whatever you put vodka in go on my, my website and you'll see the mocktails there are 10 mocktails not 10 cocktails and if you're sober and you're fighting addiction a cocktail is a no no a mocktail is yes to my uh, folks that have reached out to me in Texas Florida Virginia North Carolina New Hampshire folks 
I hope it's all is well where you are. I hope you see my videotapes. I continuously send them to you on a uh, basis of uh, as they are made, they get to you. Reach out to me with anything. I don't hear from you very often, uh, and it concerns me. I'm not saying that you need to call me, but at least text me or send me an email. Let me know that you're still fighting a, uh, addiction. Let me know that you're still sober. And if you're not, and if it's a relapse or a setback, I can help you, but you need to reach out to me. Let's recap real quick. Rock bottom, we know what that is. You're at the bottom of the pit. You're looking up. The sunshine's up there. That's rock bottom. I don't need to go in how you got there because you know how you got there and what it is. So let's figure out 10 ways to find happiness when you hit rock bottom. Be nice to people, folks. Simple. Just be nice. I know it's hard to be nice all the time, but you if you're nice, you'll get nice. Accomplish something. Don't wait for it. Go get it. Don't wait for it. If you wait, you'll never get. But if you get it yourself, you'll have it. Treat yourself. Anything. A movie, a book. Just treat yourself. Reward yourself. Reward yourself for another 24 hours of sobriety. That's a reward. When a child cleans their room or helps you with the laundry, reward them. Well, I'm telling you to reward yourself for a 24-hour sobriety. For a full day. I'm not saying you get a reward every day, so don't get greedy. But let's just say for today, reward yourself. Go for a walk. Go to the beach. Go outside. Inhale the fresh air. Listen to the birds sing. Look at the ocean. Listen to the uh, ocean sound. That's all God's creation. You're God's creation. Try to let go of controlling everything. That's my biggest problem. I've always been a control freak. Still am. Not as bad. Working on it. Cry it out. Those emotions need to come out. Do that. Just cry it out. Let go. Don't bottle it. I told you about the bottles. I don't want to see a bottle of alcohol, bottle of beer, and a bottle of emotions. Get rid of it. Reach out to people. Talk to pe people in a positive sense. Listen to their positive stories. Don't bring your dirty laundry into their lives as much as you don't want their dirty laundry into your lives. Do something new. Go kickboxing. Take up painting, sculpturing, jogging, jumping out of airplanes. Do something new. If you're young, 20 and under or so, you want to do something different, do it when I was in bad shape. Join the Marine Corps. Join the Army, Air Force, Navy, doesn't matter. Believe it or not, they're all soldiers fighting for this country as much as I'm a soldier and you can be a soldier to fight for addiction, to fight for recovery. As much as Pam and Dr. Gonzalez are, we're all soldiers in addiction war. And we will win eventually. But we need more. So if you're recovering, join us. If you're not yet, join us anyway. When you're ready to hit rock bottom, I'll be standing there. I'll reach my hand down and I'll pull you up and I'll guide you and I'll show you. And Pam will show you and Dr. Gonzalez will show you. We'll all work together for you. Do something for someone else. Just be nice to someone. It's not all about what you're getting, it's what you're giving. Read, read those books, those magazines, those newspapers. Try to read things that are positive. Keep away from the negative news that's out daily. Even go on Facebook, read some of the postings there. So that's everything you need to know about Rock Bottom. You got yesterday's video, how to balance uh, your life constantly. How to balance your life after a relapse, how to bounce back and balance it. Bouncing back from a relapse is very hard to do because you've now gotten the taste of your addiction, although it might have been a temporary taste, so now we got to start fresh, but it's only a setback. It's only a setback. It's not total failure. When you learn how to ride a bike, you fall off, you get up, you get back on. When you're fighting addiction and you're in recovery and you fall off the wagon, you can't Stop. You need to dust your knees, pull yourself up, and move on. That's all. Folks, I'm at an hour again, so I just wanted to thank everyone for coming again. Take your life back today. Because if you have a sober today, I guarantee you'll have a better tomorrow. And if it's sunny in your home today, that is great. But if it's 
dark in your home and it's negative in your home let the sunshine in and the only way to do that is for you to think positive and for you to have positive thoughts consistently and constantly and to eliminate the negativity around you eliminate it get rid of it negative people around you will bring you down don't just stand there and wait for them to do that go and get your positive life reclaim your life and get your life back that's all this is about my videos is getting your life back I got my life back June 22nd 2013 when are you gonna get yours and if you have gotten yours are you fighting the war on addiction as a soldier like I am if you are that is great and I'm here for you Go to AA, go to the rehab centers, go to my methods, do whatever you need to do, but ask God for guidance and direction. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming today. I hope you all have a pleasant weekend, and even if the weather is bad outside, let the sun shine into your home. Thank you very much. Have a great day, but more importantly, have a sober day. Goodbye.